In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use Arteza's premium watercolors. And I'm going to use these paints showing you how to paint a dry rose. So this palette comes with 36 colors. The dry rose is a sort of violet red color. As you can see, the leaves have started to, um, to wrinkle. So I'm going to paint it using very dark colors and using a wet to wet technique. So the type of paper that I'm using is Arches watercolor paper and I'm using it in cold press. As you can see, the palette um, is very easy to use. There's a, a, a pod that you can mix your colors in at the top and at the bottom. And I also have a review that I just did on how to use these paints where you can see it more in depth and I'll leave that in the description box below. But right now I'm mixing the violet color, the magenta color, and also the amaranth color to get this sort of dark, uh, plummy color of the leaves. Not the leaves, I'm sorry, of the flower petals. All right, so I'm gonna wet the paper first, and I'm wetting the paper in the shape of the flower petal on the outside. So I'm gonna paint the flower as if, as if it's laying on its side. So I've taken a small Japanese calligraphy brush, which I'll also link below if you're interested in trying it out. I'm a huge fan of um, Chinese and Japanese calligraphy brushes because of the strokes and the impression that it makes on watercolor paper. So I feel like the outside of these flower petals needs to be a little dark. So I'm going to add in some color from black and the name of it is Nior. All right, so I am if you can, if you have ever seen a photo of a dry rose petal, the outside of it starts to sort of fold over. the The very tip of the petal starts to fold over. So I'm just, I want to mimic that without drawing it so harsh. So I'm just using this black color to sort of outline it, and then I'm going to use some water to blend it together. And then the rose petals also have started to sort of like fold off to the side. So I'm going to draw that. And I like these watercolors because they are buildable, but they're also vibrant from the first start. So you don't have to um, do this sort of technique where you're like putting down watercolor and you're waiting for it to dry and then adding more. I'm just putting down one swipe. I'm not going back over what I've already painted. And if you've seen any of my painting tutorials before, then you know that I usually paint with a lot of inks. And to be honest, this is not looking too much different. The only thing is it's not as flowy as the inks. But the outcome is very, very similar. So I'm quite impressed, especially for the retail price uh, for this palette. All right, so I'm pretty much finished with the um, with the flower petals of the of the flower. I'm gonna add in some more details as it dries, but with this, I really want it to look very loose, very effortless. I don't want it to overwork it, and so I think that it's smart for me to just go ahead and go to the stem and the leaves of the flower and then come back, so that I don't spend too much time overworking it and I have to start all over again. So I'm taking water. And I'm drawing the area for the leaves. So I'm just drawing a straight line down in these sort of lines for the leaves. And as you can see, the violet color has started to bleed downward and that's what we want. We want it to gradually grow into it without a stark uh, definition. All right, so to create the green color for the leaves, I'm using this color in cobalt green and also farm green. And then I'm also using a mahogany color mixed together. So I want it to look like a foresty, a really rustic green. And I'm taking my Japanese brush on the side of the brush. And you can see what I mean by leaving the brush strokes. And you can go on the tip and get some very uh, pointed details. Almost like you're painting with a pen. Or you can go to the side and get brush strokes. So I 
I love these brushes. I definitely recommend it. Even if you're not a professional or comfortable with using watercolors or watercolor brushes, these are great to start with. So I want to put more green on the bottom and I've added more brown so I make sure and if you pay attention you can see that um, all of the green is not the same color which is absolutely fine I think that it makes it more interesting and more gives it more character if the lines are different with the brush strokes are different um, dimensions and the colors are just like different tones so what I'm doing now is the flower hasn't dried completely, but it has started to started to dry. So I'm going to go and lightly, and I hate to say trace because I'm not really tracing, but I'm just creating these really loose brush strokes around each flower petal to give it more definition so you can actually tell that it's a rose. And this part is completely optional because to be honest I would in most cases I would just leave it just like it is I wouldn't add any more anything else to it um, I really like for things to look unfinished All right, so the second set of the last thing that I'm doing is I am taking the tip of my brush and adding these veins on the flower. And they are gonna sort of fade out a little bit because the flower is still wet, but that's okay. If you want it more defined, just wait till the flower completely dries. And you can also take a marker or a color pencil and do these details. That would work just as fine. Okay, so that's pretty much our finished flower. The last thing that I'm gonna do is add some white gouache paint. I'm gonna add a few streaks of white gouache paint using an angled brush. Be careful not to overdo it on this part because you don't want the white to overpower it, but it just adds in a little bit more negative space, a little bit more character. You can always, if you feel like you've done too much, you can always go over it with some, some more watercolor paint. And I feel like there's just one line that I want to delete. So I'm going to try around this first flower petal that we drew. It's what I want to delete. So I'm going to try to delete that with some covering up with some watercolor paint. And that's pretty much our finished dried rose. It has a lot of character, um, a lot of volume. It's beautiful, dreamy, light, and airy. I would highly recommend these this palette of watercolors, especially for the retail price, like I said. I will leave a discount code as well in the description box so you can get a small discount off of your purchase from Arteza. And I would suggest um, trying out the gouache paints as well. The gouache paints are really, really good, um, especially for the variety of colors that you get um, with, these, with this brand. And I also want to point out that I have a online class that is available teaching you how to paint flowers, teaching you everything that you know about mixing watercolors and inks uh, with the flower tutorial. And I will leave that in the description box below. The link is keysandcolor.teachable.com. And this flower will also be on sale using a link in the description box. I hope you guys have a great, productive, and a creative week. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao.